up, everyone? Welcome back to another video on your favorite former U.S. Men's National Team Players YouTube channel. Very robust channel many years ago. Not so much now. I feel like I've been lost in the wilderness doing other things. But I'm back. I don't really know the direction that the channel is going to go other than I'm bringing in Cavincio. And we're having a great time. We're having some laughs. We're talking about stuff we would normally talk about. We just figured, why don't we turn on the cameras and go? That's pretty much the initial direction. However... I'm asking for your help because I need an answer to this very question. Now, before I get to the question, that was a bit of a tease. Before I get to the question, I want to give you some context. Next year, starting in 2025, I am going to be starting my coaching course for UEFA. I'm going to get my UEFA coaching badges. And so while I'm at the very beginning of this phase of my life, I wanted to ask you, what makes a good coach? What coach have you been around that has made a difference in your life. That's something that you remember they did. Now you can learn a lot from bad coaches too. I don't wanna take anything away from the bad coaches out there. Shout out to all the bad coaches because I took some things from there going, I would never coach like that. But ultimately, you're not gonna have the stuff that, that stays with you and maybe helps you with habits and disciplines and outlook and attitude and mentality from a bad coach. Usually that is more from a good coach. And so I wanna know, hit me up in the comments because as I try to shape the type of coach that I wanna be, I want as much input as possible. I wanna be a student of the game. That's what helped elevate me as a player over the other players. The other players that I played against when I was a professional were more talented. There's no question, but I was a student. I tried to get better every single day and I think that helped me maintain a good level. I was always pushing, I never settled. Not to say that those guys were purposely doing that, but you do get into a routine and a rhythm where, hey, I made it, I'm here at the top. And then you just stay there. You don't, and you lose a little bit of that edge. I went through that too, after I made the World Cup team. I really struggled afterwards because for the longest time, I was trying to fight for that respect and then I got it. And then I didn't know what to do once I got it because I'd never been there before. And that was difficult for me. And I wish I had gone to see somebody to talk that through. I internalized it. That wasn't for the best, but I'm learning from that. And I want to make sure that I learn from that as I start to really enter into the coaching world in a more meaningful way. And I think that we can use this channel to tie this back into what I was saying before to maybe show off this adventure I'm about to go on. Now I have coached over the last I don't know how many years. San Francisco Glens, shout out to the Glens, up the Glens. That was a great experience, a gift to be around some, some top and emerging athletes here in the Bay Area of Northern California. And then I've been coaching my daughter's teams. Again, anytime I'm around different situations, different, different groups of people, you have to relate to them and meet them where they are. I think that's the biggest takeaway for me that I've learned in my coaching journey is I got to meet people where they are. And then from there, once you understand what motivates them, you understand what their why is, like why, why do we do anything? Why do you play? Why did you make that pass? There's no wrong answers. Everybody has their own why, but it's just understanding where their motivations are, meeting them where they are, what they want, what they want to do with the sport, with the team individually, and then how can you help them get there? How can you maximize that potential? And maybe help them reach heights they never knew were possible. That would be a big thrill for me, no matter what, level I'm coaching at, right? Coaching very similar to defending is a lost art, I feel like in some ways. And so I want your input, ultimately. I desperately crave your input. Not so much from Cavincio. I don't care what that guy says. <laughs> so I want to actually hear from the coaches of Cavincio. Like, how did you, how did you manage that guy? He must have been a character. How do you keep him focused and concentrated on the task at hand? But yes, any of this input, any insight that I can glean, everybody has gone through some type of journey. Now, if you're not uh, quote unquote, Athletic didn't play a lot of sports. Well, I'm sure you ran into a teacher that motivated you in some way that you never knew was possible or whatever it may be. So any insight that you can get from a teacher or a coach, I will gladly, I'm gonna read all of them. I'll respond to all the comments, but this is this is real, real talk, as I said. I want, I want the good stuff. Give me the good stuff or the bad stuff. Like tell me what to avoid. They say now in the modern game that players are soft. This, I don't think players are soft. I don't think that really has changed all that much. For me, I think there's a lack of leadership somewhere. There's a lack of taking on responsibility. Maybe that falls under the under the umbrella of being soft. Like they're not willing to take on responsibility or accountability, then, then they're quote unquote soft. Leadership is not something that you can just hit a switch and all of a sudden be a leader. Some are born with it, but I actually think it's more being able to identify situations where someone needs to step up and take responsibility to be a leader 
to believe in themselves enough to have an opinion, not necessarily an opinion that's my way or the highway, but an opinion that, hey, this is the direction I think we should go in, whatever it is, it could be a pass. Like this is the pass that I think we should make as a team, or this is how I think we should move as a group. But then all obviously being open-minded and adaptable to a different type of solution, right? I'm a huge fan of problem solvers because a problem solver falls into that category, responsibility, accountability, trying to make decisions, trying things, taking risks, understanding that you're gonna fail, learning from those failures, that type of thing. When teams are not labeled soft, it is all leaders on that team. And it's very clear who the leaders are. There's a clear direction and identity and how they wanna play. And, and that seems to kind of sort out that soft tag. So maybe we can get into that in another video, the definition of what soft truly is in the modern game. Because back in the day, those guys threw around two-footed tackles like it was nobody's business. But they also weren't uh, really set up to high press and all that type of stuff. And when you go back and look at old clips. Anyway, that's it. That's all I really got. I, I just wanted to know from you, from the community, really thoughtful and meaningful community, Appreciated you guys' support over so many years. So many funny and smart people hanging out in the, in the comments. So give me some more. I need some more of that. Think about it this way. When we evaluate players, there's four areas where you evaluate players. Technical, you know, the first touch, how they control a ball, all that good stuff. Anything ball skill work, right? Tactical, of course, you got to have a good first touch before you can really do anything. Tactically, of course, there's a lot of off the ball movement where there's spatial awareness, situational awareness. So that all falls into tactical, physical, bigger, stronger, faster. What can you do to get better in those areas? And then the mental, emotional. How do you take feedback? How do you communicate? How do you lead? All these things fall into mental, emotional. How do you deal with pressure, expectations? How do you work through mistakes? How do you work through success? There's a lot happening in the mental, emotional side that will impact and influence what happens in the other three areas. But when I think about a good coach, a good coach will help you improve in all four of those. And so I kind of want to know from you to give you maybe that one extra step. How did your coach, a coach that you really valued and appreciated, how did they help you in any one of those four categories or all of them? And that's it. It's a really heartfelt video over here. See what happens when Kavincho isn't on? Real talk time. When he comes on, we're just two big giant cartoon characters laughing and having a good time. That's fun too, but I think there's some room for real talk. So. I appreciate your insight in advance. Thank you so much for your support as always. And uh, yeah, look forward to reading your comments. Peace out.